Okay. Okay, uh, we, are, we are live now. Uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining one more lecture for Processing in Memory course. Today we have uh, Nika Mansuri Giasi, who is a PhD student in the Safari Research Group, and she's going to introduce this um, interesting work on storage on in storage processing for genome sequence analysis. Nika, whenever you're ready, please uh, feel free to go ahead. Okay, thanks Juan for the introduction. Um, Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Nika, as uh, Juan mentioned, and today I will introduce GenStore, a high-performance in storage processing system for genome sequence analysis. Genome sequence analysis is critical for many applications such as personalized medicine, outbreak tracing, and evolutionary studies. Genome sequencing machines extract the smaller fragments of the original DNA sequence, known as reads. Read mapping is the first key step in many genome sequence analysis applications that aligns reads to potential matching locations within the reference genome. And for each matching location, the alignment step finds the degree of similarity between read and the reference by calculating the alignment score. Calculating the alignment score requires computationally expensive approximate string matching or ASM to account for differences between reads and the refresh genome due to sequencing errors or genetic variation. And based on this genetic variation, actually, um, uh, we can uh, make uh, conclusions about uh, the state of the data sample that we collected, if it's like for personalized medicine or other applications. Uh, so these differences are uh, very useful for that sense. So read mapping performs uh, this expensive alignment computation on large genomic data sets containing millions of reads. Therefore, read mapping is both computationally expensive and incurs high data movement overhead from storage. There has been significant effort into improving read mapping performance in different parts of the system, such as uh, computation, ca near caches, and main memory through um, either efficient heuristics or hardware accelerators and various filters that prune reads that do not require expensive computation. While these approaches address the computation overhead in read mapping, none of them alleviate data movement overhead from storage, whose impact becomes even larger when the computation overhead gets alleviated. Our key idea is to filter reads that do not require expensive alignment computation in the storage system to fundamentally reduce data movement overhead of read mapping. Examples of reads that do not require this costly alignment step are exactly matching reads to the reference genome that do not need approximate uh, string matching performed during alignment and non-matching reads that have no potential locations in the reference genome and therefore they can skip uh, the alignment step. However, filtering reads in a modern SSD can be challenging due to different behavior across read mapping workloads and the limited hardware resources in the SSD. By addressing these challenges, we propose GenStore, the first in storage processing system designed for genome sequence analysis to reduce both computation and data movement overhead. Gesto provides high performance and energy benefits compared to state-of-the-art hardware and software baselines. So that was a summary of my talk. So let's start with the background on read mapping so we can dive into the talk in more detail. Mapping reads to reference genome requires expensive computation on large data sets, and the search space in the reference genome can be very large. For example, the human reference genome contains more than 3 billion characters. Therefore, mappers typically use an index of the reference genome to reduce the search space. This index contains unique k-length subsequences called k mers extracted from the reference genome and the locations of these k mers in the reference genome. Read mapping is a three-step process. The state-of-the-art read mappers involve several heuristics to reduce the cost of com um, expensive com uh, alignment computation. And the first step called seeding, the mapper determines some potential matching locations or seeds in the large reference genome where the read could map. To do so, the read mapper extracts k from each read and looks up the k fetched from a read in the reference index. For all the k-mers that hit in the index, the read mapper marks the locations of them in the reference genome as reads potential matching locations or seeds. So basically these are the locations in the reference genome that the read potentially might match. To further reduce the cost of computational expensive alignment, the read mapper performs a second step called chaining or seed filtering 
in which the mapper prunes the seeds in the reference genome to which the read would not align using a simpler approximation of the alignment score. At the end of this step, the reads that have all of their locations filtered skip the third step, but for the remaining reads, the third step, which is the costly alignment step, determines the exact differences between the read and the reference genome uh, via um, approximate string matching operations. So we perform experimental studies to understand the potential of efficient in storage filters for improving read mapping performance. We perform a case study on a real-world genomic data set on various read mapping systems and state-of-the-art uh, SSD configurations. And uh, we make several observations. First, the ideal in storage filter significantly improves performance by reducing computation overhead and data movement overhead. Second, filtering outside SSD relatively provides lower performance benefits since it does not reduce data movement overhead from storage, and it must compete with read mapping for system resources such as main memory bandwidth and uh, computational resources in the whole system. So a hardware accelerator uh, reduces the computation bottleneck, which makes IO even a larger bottleneck in the systems and makes the um, uh, and emphasizes the necessity of in-storage filtering even further. Motivated by these observations, our goal is to design an in-storage filter for genome sequence analysis in a cost-effective manner. We have three key objectives in designing our new system. First, the system should provide high in-storage filtering performance to overlap the filtering with the read mapping of unfiltered data. So wherever the read mapping uh, system is located, either it's like in a PIM system, in memory system, uh, like in main memory or like near caches or an accelerator or in host CPU, uh, this, um, this in-storage filtering should be integrated with it such that the filtering operations that happen concurrently in the storage system uh, would overlap with the read mapping of unfiltered data. Second, the design should support reads with different properties and different degrees of genetic variation. Third, it should not require uh, significant additional hardware overhead. So to this end, we propose GenStore, which is the first in storage processing system designed for genome sequence analysis. And our key idea is to filter reads that do not require alignment inside the storage system and send the unfiltered data uh, to the host system for further processing. However, filtering reads in a modern SSD can be challenging due to different behavior across read mapping workloads and the limited hardware resources available in the SSD. Let's take a look at filtering opportunities based on input read sets. Sequencing machines produce one of two kinds of reads. Short reads that are highly accurate, but short, for example, up to a few hundreds of DNA characters, and long reads that are less accurate, but long, for example, from hundreds to millions of DNA characters. Based on these, we leverage two filtering opportunities. First, we can filter exactly matching reads, which are reads that match exactly to one or more subsequences of the reference genome and do not require approximate string matching during alignment. Exact matches can frequently occur in short read sets with low sequencing errors and low degree of genetic variation. Second, we can filter non-matching reads. Such reads do not have any potential matching locations in the reference genome and can skip the expensive alignment step. Non-matching reads can frequently occur in long read sets with high sequencing errors and short or long read sets with high degree of genetic variation. So by thorough analysis of mapping process of reads with different properties and different degrees of genetic variation, we designed two low cost in storage filters, GenStore EM for exactly matching reads and GenStore NM for filtering most of non-matching reads. Let's take a closer look at GenStore EM. GenStore EM accelerates read mapping by using an efficient and storage filter to filter reads that have at least one exactly matching location in the reference genome via simple operations and without requiring alignment. The key challenge in designing GenStore EM is the large number of random accesses to large data structures inside the SSD. This is challenging because NAND flash memory exploits poor performance for random access reads, and there is limited DRAM capacity available in SSD, which is relatively small compared to the size of data structures that need to be randomly accessed. So to reduce the number of accesses per each read, we introduce concept of read-sized gamers. 
Therefore, instead of extracting several k-mers per each read and performing index lookup for each of them, we can use the whole read as one k-mer, so basically a read-sized k-mer, and have only one index lookup per read. And to avoid random accesses to the index, we introduce sorted index of read-sized k-mers. Since we know for each read we will only have one access, we can already sort the index so that um, we can sequentially access these. So this sorted index allows finding um, exact matches via sequential scanning of the read sets and the index. I show the key idea of Genster EM with a simplified example in which each short read consists of 10 characters. Suppose that we have two data structures, a sorted read table, each entry of which stores the read and its unique ID. So here a read is 10 characters, but as I said, short reads can be a few hundred uh, characters. So, uh, so in this uh, table, we have sorted read table. So each entry of it is a read uh, and its unique ID. And uh, second, we have sorted KMER index, which contains all unique read sized KMERs extracted from the reference genome along with each k-mer's corresponding location in the reference genome. And each data structure is sorted by read and k-mer in alphabetical order in this case. So we sequentially scan through these data structures in three different ways based on a comparison result of current read and k-mer. First, when the current read and k-mer are identical, we record the read as an exactly matching read that can be filtered for, uh, from further read mapping process, and then we move to the next element in both arrays. So if the read is alphabetically larger than the k-mer, we introduce, uh, so, sorry, we conclude that the k-mer does not match uh, any read and go to the next element in the index so we can examine the next k-mer. And finally, if the k-mer is alphabetically larger than the read, we conclude that the read does not match any k-mer in the index and needs to be sent to, for a full read mapping process. And then we go to the next element in the sorted read table so that we can examine uh, the next read. So using this technique, Genstorium avoids random accesses and performs filtering using only simple low-cost logic. Despite the key benefits of sorted bit size camera index, this index takes up large space because now the, each camera is like a much larger. So for example, for a human an index, it will be around 126 gigabytes. So that happens due to a large number of unique read size k-mers. So we further reduce the overhead of Genstor EM by replacing the read size k-mers with the strong hash value of each read that can act as both sorting criterion and fingerprint of each entry. Using strong hash values instead of read size k-mers reduces the size of the index by 3.9 times. While this index is still larger than a baseline camera index using conventional read mappers, our proposal is feasible for in storage processing due to large capacity and high internal bandwidth of modern NAND flash based SSDs. Now I show the overall uh, operational flow of Genstore EM with sorted read table and sorted camera index in the NAND flash memory distributed across all channels and dies. Uh, so that we can leverage the full internal bandwidth of the SSD and the comparator logic on the SSD controller. Genstor EM consists of two steps. Step one reads the two data structures from NAND flash chips to the SSD's internal, band, uh, internal DRAM in a batched manner. So we would only need the small batches, a uh, few hundred megabytes in the DRAM uh, to stream through these uh, as sorted read uh, table and sorted camera index. And um, step two performs exact match filtering within uh, each read batch using simple comparator logic. And uh, in the end sends the non-filtered reads to the host system for full read mapping. Step one and two are performed in a pipeline manner. And during filtering, Gestor EM can already send unfiltered reads to the host system to do full read mapping. So the filtering operation and read mapping on unfiltered reads for different batches can happen concurrently. So now let's take a closer look at Gestor NM. Using uh, caching, uh, sorry, <laughs> using chaining, Gestor NM filters most of the non-matching reads, which are reads that would not align to any subsequences in the reference genome. Recall that chaining filter calculates the similarity score for each read called chaining score and filters reads with no high scoring potential matching location. Calculating a chaining score in SSD is challenging because finding the best chaining score requires performing many iterations of a dynamic programming algorithm for 
all seeds within a reed, and this is particularly challenging um, for, so basically this iteration happens for every seed, and that can be challenging for long reeds since they have large number of kamers per reed. So to reduce the cost of chaining, uh, Genstor and M uses a lightweight chaining filter that selectively performs chaining on your reeds with small number of seeds and directly sends reeds that require more complex chaining to the host system. This idea is based on our observation from analyzing a wide range of real world genomic read data sets. And uh, this figure shows uh, an example. So it shows an alignment probability of a read in a long read data set to subsequences in a reference genome as a function of number of seeds per read. We observe that reads with sufficiently large number of seeds are likely to align to subsequences in the reference genome, and such reads can be directly sent to CPU for full, uh, full read mapping bypassing the in-storage filter. Because in the end, uh, even if they go through the filter with a high probability, they won't be filtered and they need to in the end uh, be sent uh, to the host system for full read mapping. So we conclude that the selective lightweight chaining approach can filter many non-aligning reads without costly hardware resources in the SSD. For more detail on Genstor and M, please uh, refer to our paper. So now I will go into our results. We evaluate the following systems. Base, which is a state-of-the-art software or hardware read mappers for both short and long reads. And GS, or Genstore, is base integrated with Genstore inside SSD. So basically, we would see each of these baselines, how much benefit Genstore introduces to them if it gets integrated with them and concurrently filters some reads inside the SSD while these, uh, each of these baselines um, are performing read mapping um, and the system. And we evaluate these mappers and systems with various SSD configurations, a low end, a medium end, and high end SSD. And for other details about our methodology, please refer to our paper. So we analyzed the benefit of Genstore EM for a 22 gigabyte short read set where 80% of reads exactly match some subsequences in a reference genome and can be filtered. We show the benefits of Genstore and software and hardware read mappers. And Genstore provides up to 2.5 times speed up compared to software baseline and up to 3.3 times speed up compared to the hardware baseline. Genstore provides an average 3.9 times energy reduction. So we analyzed the benefits of Genstore and M for a 12 gigabyte long read set with very high genetic variation compared to the reference genome where 99.7% of reads do not match any subsequences in the reference genome. We show the benefits of Genstore on software and hardware read mappers and show that Genstore provides up to 27.9 times speed up compared to software baseline and up to 19.2 times speed up compared to hardware baseline. And it uh, also on average provides 27.2 uh, times energy reduction. So we find area and power values of Genstore by synthesizing Genstore EM and NM using 65 nanometer technology node and find that for an eight channel SSD, the area of Genstore is 0.2 millimeters square and the power is 26.6 watts. By scaling the area to lower technology nodes, we observe that the area overhead of Genstore is 0.006% of an Intel processor and less than 9.5% of the three ARM processors in a SATA SSD controller. Let me briefly talk about other results that are included in a paper before concluding these talks. Th this talk. So these uh, results include the following. Effect of read data set features on performance, such as its uh, data size. So for example, we uh, analyze input data sizes up to 440 gigabytes. And filter ratio, basically how many percent of reads in a read data set uh, get, can be filtered. And performance benefits of an implementation of Genstore outside the SSD. And we show that in some cases, it provides performance benefits due to more efficient streaming accesses, but it provides significantly lower benefit compared to Genstore inside SSD. And we also provide a more detailed characterization of uh, non-matching reads across different read mapping use cases and species. Now let me conclude by giving the summary. There has been significant effort into improving read mapping performance through efficient heuristics, hardware accelerators, and various filters that prone reads that do not require expensive computation. While these approaches address the computation overhead in read mapping, none of them alleviate the data movement overhead from storage, whose impact becomes even larger when the computation overhead gets alleviated. Our goal is to improve the performance of genome sequence analysis by efficiently 
and effectively reducing unnecessary data movement uh, from the storage system. The key idea is to filter reads that do not require the expensive ASM computation and the storage system to fundamentally reduce data movement overhead. However, filtering reads inside SSD is challenging because first, reads uh, mapping workloads can exhibit different behavior. And second, there are limited available hardware resources in the storage system. To this end, we propose GenStore, the first in storage processing system designed for genome sequence analysis to reduce both computation and data movement overhead. GenStore provides high performance and energy benefits compared to state-of-the-art hardware and software baselines. So uh, as you've seen, this talk was, um, this project was intersection of um, genomics and storage processing um, and near data processing in a sense. So I would like to briefly talk about two uh, Safari PNS courses on genomics. So genome sequence analysis on mobile devices and accelerating genome analysis with FPGAs, GPUs, and new execution paradigms. You can uh, find the links on uh, my slides by clicking on these and also on um, courses uh, tab in Safari web page. So yeah, thank you very much for listening to my talk. Thank you very much, sure. Inka. Thank you very much. Very good talk. Um, I, I don't see any questions in the chat, but I would like to ask you a couple of things. Sure. So you, you mentioned that in the paper, uh, you have included uh, evaluation of GenStore on different devices. Uh, different uh, device? You mean storage devices or? No, I mean, you said outside the SSD. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, on, on a CPU. Oh, so for software baselines, we assume this is running on the CPU. And for hardware baselines, we assume that GenStore hardware components are running uh, in like a um, hardware accelerator in working in parallel with the hardware accelerator baseline. Uh -huh. I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, those would be uh, interesting results for sure. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions I have is, so um, one, um, something that you need for the, um, for the EM version of GenStore is that the, uh, the, the, the reads are sorted, right? Yeah. So where is this sorting happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so we uh, measure the throughput of sorting for different batches of reads that get generated uh, from the sequencing machine. So, and we compared the through, because like, Sequencing machines generate reads in batches, so uh, we would we can sort and merge uh, different batches. So we measured that throughput with the throughput of sequencing and base calling, and we realized that uh, the throughput of that step is much higher than sequencing and base calling. So it can be integrated within the same pipeline. So we would have sequencing, base calling, and I don't know this pre-processing. So without changing the overall throughput of let's say input data generation. So we envision it to be um, kind of like integrated as part of the same pipeline. Mm -hmm. But then maybe the alignment could also be integrated in the pipeline. Uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, but also sometimes you would need to do uh, alignment several times. For example, you want to try with different parameters, different camera length or different, let's say thresholds for the alignment operation, or you want to uh, align several uh, like uh, a read set against several reference genomes, for example, in the case of, um, let's say, COVID-19, and then the, when things are changing and different references come, uh, or for various reasons, uh, you might uh, want to repeat that. So it is always also not possible to definitely integrate it as part of the same pipeline, because you, you might want to just do it several times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. But definitely, um, that is an important uh, um, use case always, right? Or like an important scenario for runtime analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think so. So there is uh, one question in the chat, I think. Yeah, I don't understand the question. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 
I mean, the, the question is uh, going to be Nika in the uh, in the YouTube chat. So okay, maybe I can we can later discuss it, or maybe uh, this um, this person can send us an email as well because uh, it's uh, that's uh, possible if, uh, sure, sure. to ask something specific. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess I have one last question is uh, about the slide 31 because you know you you, you define these two regions. Uh, mm -hmm. For those uh, uh, reads, what that will be aligned in the in the uh, processor? Yeah. So, so how frequent is this? I assume that you have like um, some statistics in the paper. Uh, basically, how many reads would not align? Yeah, exactly. So, how, mm -hmm. how much data movement are you actually saving here? Mm -hmm. It heavily depends on uh, the use case uh, and the degree of genetic variation between the read data set and the reference genome. Um, for example, for humans, uh, because we don't have that much uh, degree of genetic variation, uh, so the opportunity is relatively less compared to some viral samples or bacterial samples that relatively evolve much faster. Um, so we observed, let's say, um, filter ratios of, I don't know, up to uh, 99 plus percent, uh, while for uh, let's say some species, it can be, I don't know, uh, less than 20%. So mm -hmm. it heavily varies. And actually we provide uh, a lot of data about that for that different use cases and species. So uh, in the paper, so I think that it would be also nice if people are interested, they can take a look at those uh, mm -hmm. analysis, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Nika. Yeah, thanks Juan. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Uh, I oh. hope that uh, you know, uh, people enjoy the talk and uh, and they can also uh, check your paper more carefully to, to learn much more about this topic. Um, so yeah, thanks again. And thanks. Uh, thank you everyone for attending one more Processing in Memory lecture. Uh, we hope to see you in a later date. Okay, bye. bye.